Hello YouTube, it's Ethikiel here, um, doing a second after action report for Combat Mission Battle for Normandy. Uh, this one is a multiplayer game, play by email, which means uh, I'm transferring a minute's worth of action back and forth with an opponent. Um, my opponent is Captain Ayers, I think I'm pronouncing that right, from the Few Good Men Forum. Uh, both Captain Ayers and myself are taking part in a, an ongoing campaign that's getting on to about one year old now. Uh, and I think it's the first birthday in November. I, um, I'm commanding part of the Axis team, for, and uh, Captain Ayers, of course, is part of the Allies. I'm commanding forces of the 709th uh, Infantry Division of the German, German Army, and I'm taking on members of the uh, 82nd Airborne. Basically, uh, this campaign uh, means my forces are uh, not the best of quality, um, uh, but uh, going up against uh, American Airborne forces is going to be a very tough order. Uh, highly trained and uh, disciplined troops uh, compared, to, compared to my forces, which uh, historically were mostly um, second-rate troops and uh, Ost battalions, or pretty much b battalions of uh, ex-Soviet prisoners who had decided to... Um, sign up with the German army who are posted to the uh, Western Front. So uh, I must admit I went into this this battle uh, attacking the airborne not with the greatest uh, sense of confidence but uh, just following the campaign rules um, I have the forces at my disposal I've got to do the best I can with them. So uh, I should switch over now just to how I deployed. Um, I have on my right flank uh, this is it's a weapons company well, uh, and on my left flank and centre is a uh, Fusilier company. So, um, just the first turn of actions going on. On this uh, right flank, uh, my plan is to uh, move this up into the village you probably saw earlier, and uh, and hold that village with the weapons company, uh, and actually cause a bit of a um, distraction with it, while my uh, Fusiliers move up and hopefully um, can get behind the enemy in some way. I'm when it is not really wanting to get into a long-range firefight with the American paratroopers, I will lose any firefight I'm in. Um, they simply have greater numbers at a squad level and just have a better, better morale, better skill level. So I uh, was trying to be sneaky all the way through. Um, I won't give away the ending, but uh, I'm just starting now by making some noise on map mortars here. 81mm mortars taking shots at the enemy deployment zones or likely places they're moving into. And it's the end of the first turn. I'll skip most of that. I've edited most of those out, so we should get a nice clear run of action. It's just going to take a few minutes to move up into my initial positions. So you'll see there's a few companies of fusiliers moving in through that uh, forested area in the centre. And on the far left, south side, is my biggest risk. Um, that is my extreme left flanking force of a platoon. Usually I wouldn't do this, it's all its own without any support, but uh, my goal is on the left flank to uh, have that hidden, attract all the enemy to towards this village where hopefully my opponent will think this is where the main attack is. This is by far the most logical approach to the, uh, the green target area at the back there. Um, and hopefully later on, um, on my, that flanking force could get a get a good line on the enemy um, and open up with their MG42s. That's the plan. <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, won't spoil how it went. So, so it's just going. This is so every little pause you see there is just me changing over the files. Um, so every little pause is a transfer back and forth. Uh, we just use uh, usually. Uh, usually it's using just uh, Dropbox, which um, it's a good little uh, file sharing system, which is good to transfer the files between players. Us usually um, one or two files were transferred each night, so this battle went on for a few weeks, about two and a half weeks I think from memory. This so is my extreme left uh, flanking force uh, platoon at almost full strength. The Fusilier platoon has very little AT capability or anti tank capability, but uh, having a couple of uh, MG42 teams and uh, a lot of uh, 
MG42s and rifles, it's good. I'll just quickly show off what I hope is the turning secret weapon, is that support options. Um, lots of on-map mortars, which I'm pointing out now, and then beyond that is all I've also taken from the uh, my regiment that's fighting this battle, some 120mm off-map mortars, which you'll see come down a bit later. Um, those 120mm mortars are a lot more deadly, um, and hopefully I can um, lay some hurt on the enemy. So uh, the on-map mortars have done their opening little um, harassment of fired, um, and they're moving up now. While the MG42 teams are, this is a, a full uh, MG42 and MG34 platoon, so a lot of small uh, heavy machine gun teams. So if they get set up, they can really hold a position quite well against enemy infantry. Just got to get there first. And in the uh, Kuba wagons is. Uh, just there, uh, custom commanders. I've also got uh, on map um, my battalion HQ, um, a high level HQ unit, so I'm just, just hanging that back in the farmhouse there. Really don't want that to be exposed to the enemy if I can avoid it. So um, the forces I've got to choose from is uh, from a, an order of battle roster that our game master has uh, set up for a, a whole bunch of regiments actually. Um, the campaigns I think is going quite well. Um, so, needless to say, regiment, the divisions like that I'm commanding, um, the 709th is a, uh, a very weak division. It's, uh, it's a lot of, it was a static infantry division which didn't have a lot of um, maneuverabilities, lots of infantry. Um, yes, and uh, of course the 82nd Airborne is a well known force. The 709th in history uh, really got butchered uh, in Normandy by the end of the campaign, there was not much left. Uh, they were definitely involved uh, in the early month of June and uh, were really in the thick of it. So I've just noticed my um, first contact with the enemy. It looks like, uh, from memory, I think, yep, they're uh, 16mm on map mortars taking pot shots at uh, my platoons moving up at, uh, into the forest. Luckily for me, uh, they all fall just off the mark. So the first airborne forces are located inside that uh, the village. Looks like the airborne have beat me to the village. My heavy uh, machine gun team setting up and firing back though. It's, uh, so I've definitely got fire superiority. This, however, is where my first mistake happens. So even though I'm getting kills and it looks really good, uh, you notice in the background my mortars are taking shots. I forgot to put cover arcs on. The cover arcs in the game allow my force tell my forces not to fire at anything they see. Um, unless um, it falls in a cover arc. There's no cover arc there that fired anything they see. So the mortars really laid, gave hell to that squad, but in doing so, exposed their position. Uh, mortars are really easy to spot when they're firing, um, and uh, soon after you'll see the result of that. So the enemy now knows where my mortar platoon is set up. I've realised now between turns, and I've put on cover arcs, but it's really too late. Um, I could have moved them. Um, I was thinking, uh, do I risk it? But I thought I'll just keep them, just keep them, okay, just keep them down. Maybe, maybe they get lucky, but uh, can we tell they they didn't? So you'll probably see now the response. Yeah, there you go. That's the first of many uh, mortars in the game, like they were in reality, are absolutely deadly in this combat. I'm losing three or four men each hit. Um, the veteran airborne forces on their mortars, they're very good at using those weapons and they're getting direct hits. So just in those first few rounds um, I've lost a mortar team and uh, some support uh, ammo carriers. And I chose not to move them. Um, the reason being, well, I should have, but uh, just where they were, I just wanted to keep them well away from the enemy. The enemy I already saw the enemy had riflemen up here, so um, got one of them. But um, so I didn't really want to move the mortars up a closer range. There, I think they, I think that personally, I think they get vulnerable. So I wanted to keep them back and uh, just hope the enemy didn't have too many mortars lined up to ready to take uh, fire on them, to put fire on them. Sorry.
Meanwhile, um, my heavy machine gun team's on the uh, my side, I think it's the south side of the village, um, are definitely set up and ready to go. And uh, you'll see there, there's a few squads try to enter the village and are immediately re repulsed. I think it's really just a probe or a, or a scout, a scouting force to see what type of strength they've got, but they are cut down pretty quickly. So, um, I'm going to swing the camera around here to soon to show from the American point of view. ordering the mortars also to take some fire at the uh, troops hiding behind the railroad. So I'll just swing around. This is what it's like from the Americans' point of view, so pretty much what it looks like when you've got about two or three uh, heavy machine gun teams firing at you. Not a good look. Especially when they're uh, MG42s, some of them. So the enemy the enemy decides to keep firing at the mortars. I'm not too worried. I mean, I left them here. If, if the enemy's wasting their, well, not wasting, but if they're using their ammo on uh, their mortar ammo on my mortars. Uh, if we're just trading mortar shots, uh, means later on in the battle, um, my other forces will only have to worry, won't have to so much worry about them. Um, that was my thinking at the time. So I'm happy to trade mortar blows at the moment. In addition, I've got the off-map mortars, which haven't come down yet, which the enemy won't know about yet. Um, and there's no way the enemy can target those ones, so um, I still have some artillery in reserve. That, those larger explosions you hear is the spotting rounds coming down for the larger mortars off map, the 120 mils. So they're pre-planned from the beginning of the game. Um, I'm, I was thinking at the time, hopefully the enemy had forces behind those hedgerows. That's probably where I'd be deploying if I was in, in his shoes. Good defensive spots just in front of the um, objective zone. I didn't expect the enemy to move this far forward so soon. So I just moved one of my platoons up over that railroad. Um, they got across no problems. So it's a good little test to see if, uh, if there's, there's obviously no enemy um, with the line of sight down that ra railroad gap there. Okay, my 120 mm mortars have finished their firing mission. Yeah, never ever underestimate, never ever underestimate, underestimate mortars in this game, they are absolutely deadly. Oh, some, some stats out there somewhere suggesting that uh, all casualties in Normandy is like some amazing figure were caused by mortars, uh, not rifle shots. I think it's something above 50%, that's for sure. I don't know the exact number, but it's absolutely amazing. And you can see why when you've got uh, such handy uh, high explosives in. So handy. Uh, and this up here is the start of my biggest and uh, the, the second mistake that <laughs> um, basically you'll notice my forces here had cover arcs on, which means they weren't firing, but the enemy still moved up the airborne. So I was spotted the enemy, but my troops were under orders not to fire. Um, the cover arcs were on because I wanted this force to remain a complete secret and not to take and not to take pot shots at the enemy in a distance and give away the position. Unfortunately, the uh, enemy got lucky and moved the force up, so I opened up hoping it was just a small force. But as you'll see, uh, things start turning against me right now. So, 
there's a full platoon firing at those forces. I'm just taking cover behind the hedgerows there. There's obviously some more forces in the trees behind. Don't know what yet. But that is definitely not a good sign. I did not expect the enemy to um, have a force that far uh, on my left flank. I thought he would uh, focus closer to the objective. Um, I think, if I remember the emails that came after the battle, I think my enemy was uh, attacking down his right flank. So we sort of had a, a platoon run into each other this way. So, um, yeah, didn't work out. This, this little plan didn't work out. So, yeah, there we go. The um, You'll see there, my forces started moving. I'm trying to move them up towards the, uh, the hedgerows just for some better cover, but the airborne there are just taking a murderous toll as soon as they open up. Um, they've got far better skills, and that one squad there was lost like half its men in a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds, sorry. So yeah, running around a swamp in about, you know, no more than 20 metres and I lose a whole bunch of men. Still trading fire on the left flank here. I don't know how big the enemy's force is. Meanwhile, I'm moving um, my forces in the village further up. I'm um, just trying to scout out to see uh, if I can take those northern buildings of the village. Yeah, I'm just looking now. I remember looking at the objective saying that's suddenly a very long way away. So, um, yeah, scouting out with a, with a smaller team, but run again straight into a uh, American platoon, which uh, really hurt that uh, heavy machine gun team very quickly. So just turn off the trees, and another squad gets ambushed while they're hunting, which is probably the best thing to do, just nice, cautiously, and quiet, but uh, three men are immediately cut down and KIA'd by an American platoon. Okay, you'll also notice there, uh, there's a gap now in the hedgerows. I didn't notice it at the time. That is the airborne forces blasting through the hedgerows. And very soon they'll be flanking me uh, quite nastily. That platoon is completely stuffed. Um, no other way to say it. The uh, airborne forces have a good selection of equipment available. Um, they have demo charges on them. They have good range of grenades and weapons. Um, in my force just generally have a few grenades in their, in their guns. So, that whole platoon, a bit of a spoiler alert, that whole platoon is wiped out to a man. Um, that hasn't happened to me for a very long time, so <laughs> I'm not saying I'm a brilliant player, but uh, I didn't expect the, that level of carnage so quickly, but uh, that's what you get when you make a mistake. <laughs> so the gamble didn't pay off, but uh, Ah oh, well, there's always another one. Meanwhile, um, my, there's still taking the old casualty over on my right flank. and uh, But I have moved up successfully to... I don't think the enemy has reinforced his position on the north side of the village, so I'll take advantage of that. And uh, that centre is obviously blocked off by at least, a, I'd say, a platoon strength of airborne, so I'm probably not getting through. I could sit and have a drawn-out firefight with the enemy, but um, I was never wanted to do that in this battle. I was never going to win that, um, as I said before. I uh, so that was always not my goal. The only way I was going to get to that objective zone, I thought, was to um, actually be a little bit sneaky and somehow get around the enemy um, without them noticing. Um, Taking advantage, advantage of the terrain where possible. Still more mortars uh, falling down. So... Even that uh, one platoon in the centre, which has been north of the 
Now the Scythe starts to take some hits. Once again from Mortars. Okay, and that's, that's the quality of my troops. I've got to pick up some enemy squads running down the centre in the open on a road and my heavy machine gun team all set up, deployed, taking shots at them no more than 150 metres away and I can't score a hit it's uh... that's a difference in quality for you um... yeah, you've got an MG42 on a, on a tripod and you can't hit the side of the bar oh well that's, that, that's, that's one thing I do like about things when you do campaigns like this uh, You've got to really focus at both the strategic level and also inside the battles, the tactical levels. You got what you got and you've got to survive. So just moving on. So picking up the odd troop enemy troop uh, in the tree line there, so I'll take pot shots whatever I can get. At this point I have um, really given up just trying to uh, have a serious shot at the uh, objective. Uh, there's no way I'm going to get through two lines of uh, Bacage, where there's probably enemy an enemy force uh, holding it. Um, not, with the fo not with just only infantry forces at my disposal. And a mixture of forces, a couple of veteran units scattered in there, but um, most of them are regular or green, from memory. So one lone guy is uh, carrying the only one left from his whole entire platoon. And this is my uh, larger off-map mortars again. Take, take him shots in that uh, tree line. I know there's at least uh, I think there's one mortar squad in there, but uh, I'm hoping I can pick up some more kills, something I don't see. The enemy's got a line of defence there between the village and the objective. I simply uh, don't have the troop numbers to, uh, not in that location, to actually push, push forward after that. And the mortars have gone through all their ammunition, the on-map mortars, so I'm just moving them up um, to use their rifles, um, just to reinforce that position. So having uh, a good number of the weapons company, minus the old casualty, about a third, I think a third of casualties, they should be able to uh, hold their defensive positions inside the buildings. On the centre, I'm decided to move up the two remaining pl Fusilier platoons. I'm, I'm hoping it's, a, it's an incredible long shot, but uh, I'm decided to go with it. Um, to move the two Fusilier platoons up into that line there, um, if I can get a good defensive position on that Bacage and uh, maybe trade some fire, and I hope maybe, maybe push forward up through the centre there. Um, it's, uh, I'm hoping most of the uh, American forces are still on that left flank. Look searching for any more enemy. Um, of course the enemy doesn't really know if I've got anything else hiding back there, so they've got to search it out before they can really realise it's secure. But I think um, my enemy, my opponent did actually uh, realise he had uh, got that flank pretty quickly. So when well, the first platoon platoon's over unscathed, then I'm moving the second platoon across that road now into the same spot. Um, you'll also notice they get tired and fatigued very quickly, these troops. Um, so yeah, that was I didn't expect that, not that quickly, but um, that also caused problems because it's going to take longer for them to actually get up to the bacage, to the final deployment zones where I want them. Also, I can't edit anything at the moment because it's in the, in the middle of a turn and um, my men are running straight towards uh, a couple of uh, water rounds lying 
coming down. They're coming down and they're where they're going. And the enemy realizes what's going on. They spot the troops and start firing down the road. So I start taking some casualties. Uh, at this point, so there's no point stopping and trying to go back. Uh, probably lose a few more as the enemy, as each squad stop, regroup, and then move. So I just keep going and hope and just pray as well. For those airborne firing from down the end of the road, there are incredibly accurate with just rifles and maybe the odd BAR. Um, no, sorry, that's airborne, it's MBMGs, not BARs. Um, so I immediately lose uh, quite a few troops here trying to cross that road. Where if you remember before, that heavy machine gun team couldn't hit anything. Maybe I'm just incredibly unlucky, I don't know. So yeah, I just lost about the equivalent of about half a squad a couple of seconds again. That's the thing with these troops, they um I have, there's something going right for me. Um when my squads do actually get into a good defensive position for cover, they and they get the jump on the enemy, they I mean firepower will win. But uh, you can notice the American Airborne being um, of a high quality troop. Um they don't break, unlike mine they break uh, as quick as possible. Already, even though they're in a better position, they take some fire and half a platoon at that line will, is about to run away. Um, and they they still lose the old casualty, even though they're in good cover up positions. So, that's the real difference between the two forces, in my opinion. Um, see, if the troops aren't in that defensive position, they're still trying to get to that position, which the, my enemy here really did, was able to do very well. Then, um, Troops don't stand a chance. Uh, and one man knows his enemy outside and just sits there. Well, that's what happens when you get a reverse. A burst from an air to an M set SMG air during close range. Well, that squad at least has one Thompson, I know that. So, this is when I realised, yeah, it's definitely game over. Uh, I started to I put the ceasefire email and push the ceasefire button on the game. Um, <laughs> Didn't realise uh, the enemy had so many forces around that line, and pretty much I'm that those two platoons are getting fired upon by three different directions. So it was always a huge gamble that would pay off again. So I thought I'd just let him run until I use all my off-map artillery, maybe get some kills. But uh, those two pl platoons in that uh, little cove there are uh, absolutely decimated. Um, not, as, not to the man, not like uh, their poor comrades on the left flank, but uh, they are in a horrible position there, um, completely surrounded almost. And as soon as those guys come to fire, they run. If you look in the bottom there, you see the bar with the, the red, that red indicates how close they are being pinned and cowering and likely to run away. So, yeah, they, they, that bar fills up very quickly with these, these squads. Um, so they really don't like any bullets coming towards anywhere near them. Saying that, uh, I'm still getting some, some kills on the American Airborne Forces. Um, so it's not a complete loss. Um, the, where we are in the campaign, I think uh, if I remember the campaign rules correctly, uh, it's a little bit hard at the moment for uh, them to actually resupply. Uh, so their losses will, uh, will definitely stick. Um, history in this campaign, this is being fought on the uh, the night, evening of 6th of June on down my shots. As I was saying, this campaign is uh, currently sitting on the evening of um, June 6th on D-Day. Uh, I think it's about the fourth campaign turn. Um, so we're very soon moving over to just one campaign turn a day. With D-Day we had four. Um, but uh, this this particular um, time, the history is changing already. Um, at this point in time, uh, Utah Beach is not in Allied hands. We're still, the Germans are still uh, holding on. So the airport is still uh, completely cut off from any type of uh, support from the beach and the landing zone. So, um, we just, that, I don't want to give anything away, but um, it's just still attacking, trying to get some casualties on the enemy. But as you can see, uh, is it really working? Well, that's up for uh, interpretation. So, heavy 
heavy machine gun team and then we come back. Looks like the air will try to take the village in the in towards the end of the battle, but uh, didn't realise my heavy machine gun platoon had moved up to cover the north face of the village and uh, lost quite a few men there. Once again another good example of the different calibre of troops. Um, virtually a full platoon there on that left flank. Most of the actual available troops are in just trying to con just kind of concentrate them on that few enemy squads, but uh, as you'll see in a second, even though I uh, have a full line of uh, troops firing there, not enough, they start breaking and running again. And uh, I think also some of those squads are also rattled, which means they uh, break even easier. And then they just uh, they have lost the to fight. So uh, definitely at this point, both uh, my opponent and I, have, we know the battle's over. We've both clicked the ceasefire button in the game. However, um, it can take a few turns to come into effect, or a few minutes of game time. Um, the simple point is, I don't think, I'm not 100%, but I think the ceasefire doesn't really take effect until the current firefights or the current uh, trading blows are actually dealt with, and uh, forces have a distance between them. So because we've got that firefight going on that uh, that uh, centre area there, um, the battle still will finish up um, once that dies down. So yeah, it's a, another bit of a difference with uh, the combat mission series over other RTS games, um, or any type of strategy game. Um, the forces are not balanced, like you'd think, you know, one unit kills another unit really good, they're actually trying to be a simulation of historically what would happened. So if we have a, I've got to actually show one of these battles with uh, the tanks, um, I realise both of these AARs have been infantry heavy, or infantry only I should say, um, but uh, there is tanks in the game, lots of tanks, and uh, mechanised forces, so um, when the Germans have, uh, say, a few Panthers or Tigers on the map, uh, it's a very different story, as well as uh, better quality troops um, you get uh, to see the true uh, the true uh, the, oh, yep yep, yep. <laughs> First time. The, uh, the the true uh, deadly power of some of the German squ uh, squads and the MG uh, MG 42 is in capable hands so it's not trying to be a, an even card game as such as it is trying to be a simulation it does I think they always have done it very well Not much left of that um, force now. Oh, excuse me, it's uh, getting on at night, long day at work, um, hence the delay in this AR, so got to enjoy yourself with a uh, bit of a drink. Alcohol and wargaming. Best, uh, good combination, I must say so. So, if there's any positive takeaway from this battle, in my point, um, the village was taken. Um, shame it wasn't an objective. <laughs> uh, he just lost a couple of um, the Kuba wagons to mortify too, it looks like. At least the village was taken, but um, still didn't get anywhere near that objective in this game. There'll always be a next time. <laughs> okay, I think that's the end of the battle. Um, yep, so we've got... Uh, I was actually quite surprised this result. It was only a... Uh, tactical victory to the US Army, um, but you see that I, I honestly thought it would be a total victory for them because my kill, my losses are dramatically higher. What actually probably pushed it towards only a tactical victory or a very minor victory is the fact that the, um, the Mary my opponent, Captain A, has decided to really counter-attack with everything he had. I think it was found out he was two whole companies of airborne and he left his uh, objective area completely void of troops to hold it. So the point system is not counted as being held. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a let off there, I think. Um, I was very surprised. I posted that back on the forums to my comrades, my fellow generals on the Axis side, but uh, so be it. So yeah, I still did, did, did take some uh, 
may cause some casualties, but uh, if you look at those casualties there, the mortars were really wanted, I thought, for the, my opponent. 16 casualties for my mortar team, and that one didn't do too so good. Yeah, another double digit one there, eight there. And of course those uh, rifles, rifle squads on the uh, left flank uh, really racked up the kills. Not too many of my uh, forces got some uh, decent, decent returns. Some of the heavy machine gun teams did there. So um, that's one little positive, I guess. Uh, just checking my mortars. Yeah, my mortars <laughs> I've got picked the wrong targets, that's for sure. So no joy there either. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed that uh, battle. Give me a bit of a taste of what multiplayer is like. Absolutely unforgiving. Thanks again to my opponent, and I'll uh, see you next time.